Natural Geometric Exploring presents Pirates of the Wybicus. Wow! How'd you like to sail a ship like that, Hundley? <laughs> now there was a ship that couldn't be sunk by monkey breath. The SS Wybicus was attacked by the bold pirate Black Hat Besame. <laughs> Pirate vessel off the port bow. All hands to your stations. Whole wind, coxswain. No. <laughs> oh. Those ships were so dignified and neat. Wouldn't it be great to be an old-time captain? <laughs> the neatest ship to ever set sail was the SS Dignified. Its commander was world-renowned. Captain Hundley. No other captain was as smart, as orderly, or had as wet a nose. All's clear, Captain Hundley, sir. Thank you, sir. You know how much your approval means to me, sir. Captain Hundley's crew was always orderly and efficient. knew how to ride the breezes like Captain Hundley, the greatest sailor in the history of wind. But all was not smooth sailing. The wind was so strong, the pirates were upon the dignified before Captain Hundley could give orders. The pirates were led by... Yellow Hat the Pirate. He's famous, you know. Hi, how are you? We're uh, taking over your ship because, uh, well, you know, that's, that's what pirates do. But the most undignified thing wasn't putting Captain Hundley in his own brig. It was this. Who are you? <laughs> I like you already. Come on out and have fun with us. George wanted to hang it up where Captain Hundley could enjoy it. George got an idea about how he could really help Captain Hundley. Are you down here? Oh, my goodness. I mean, R. Wake up. Uh, put on life vests. We're, we're filling with water. Sinking. We, it, we gotta get back to our own ship. <laughs> Captain Hundley used the wind perfectly, and they set sail. George! George! <laughs> hey, that, that sounds fun, doesn't it, George? <laughs> Say, Hunley, your good pal George is going to come out on the boat with us today. <laughs> At least Hunley knew what to expect, so he was prepared. George wondered, who were these incredible fruit balancers? Zucchinis! <laughs> Piscetti! 
Giorgio. These are my friends, the famous zucchinis. <laughs> we can buy to order food for our rehearsal. Our show is tonight. But now, all he wanted was to be an amazing balancing zucchini. Want to deliver this to the zucchinis for me? <laughs> Aha. Maybe you like to see them again because you want to be a zucchini, eh? Uh huh. Ah. which gives us the strength to perform our amazing feats! <laughs> I think he wants to join us. <laughs> it's not that easy. It takes lots of practice to do things like us. Balance requires total control. <gasps> I never sneeze unless uh, a cat. Leo's allergic to cat hair, and sneezing is very bad for his balance. It would wreck our show. George was proud to be a starter zucchini. He gave out every flyer. And that night, everyone he knew came to the show. Everyone. Gnocchi just wanted to watch. She found a quiet place where she couldn't possibly bother anyone. Okay, just relax, Chef. We'll do everything. This is like a dream coming through. Gnocchi ran to Chef Biscetti whenever she saw him. So why should now be any different? Is that a... Uh, uh... Oh, it's Gnocchi. Leo, don't sneeze. I... I can't... can't, can't help it. Gnocchi, go with Giorgio. <laughs> this was just like that mop. So George shifted his hands. George was all day, practicing to be in the show. <gasps> we made it! <laughs> After a sneeze break, the show went on and was a great success. And when it was over, of their great balance, we voted to make George and Chef Biscetti official zucchinis. Oh! <laughs> and you're welcome to practice with us anytime. So that was all real? Oh, I'm glad I didn't know. I, I would have worried. Ah, nothing to worry about. George is a natural. <laughs> <laughs> But maybe he should stick to the high wire. Most mornings, George went out on the porch to find the paper. Ooh. This morning, the paper found George. Sorry! George wished he could be a paper boy someday. But he didn't even know how to ride a bike. 
Not yet, anyway. <laughs> this? Oh, why, this was my bike when I was a boy. I sure had fun. But it was a long time ago. George liked knowing the man with the yellow hat was holding him up. By the third day, <laughs> oh. he rode so fast, the man with the yellow hat couldn't keep up. <laughs> Very good, George. I think you're ready to ride on the road. <laughs> now remember, always watch where you're going, stay on the right side of the road, and signal turns, like this for left, and this for right. <laughs> That's it. Oh, and be a good little monkey cyclist. Bye-bye. came out so fast, but I'm going to be late for school. Hey, could you finish my paper up? <laughs> Trusted with a paper route, it was like George's wish had just been granted. Every house on the road gets a paper, including the houses across the stream. Uh -huh. Yes, George had become just like a real paper boy. Nothing would stop him from completing his route. Last time they came to the stream, the man with the yellow hat made paper boats. George thought he remembered how. His boat was so good, George decided to make a whole fleet. be a paper boy. <laughs> That's an important job. <laughs> Looks like you've delivered them all but one. Another day's hard work almost done, eh? <gasps> George couldn't wait for his newspapers to be sun-dried. George had promised Bill he'd deliver all these papers. If it didn't get done, Bill could lose his job. Uh Maybe the man with the yellow hat knew where to get dry papers. Hey, hold on, George. How about we just buy a few dry papers and deliver them right now? And so, George was able to finish his route just like a real paper boy. Maybe I should buy a new bike for myself, too. <laughs> Sorry. The world was full of surprises. But George never imagined anything like this. This was the museum's first robot exhibit. So, what do you think, George? So, 
Easy or what? I want ten. <laughs> this one has a delicate enough grip to perform surgery or do this. Now, over here are examples of what people imagined robots would be. <laughs> this is where we'll put your rare models. You will have them here before the opening tonight, right? Oh, sure, I'll bring them back after I take George home. Thanks. Here, you can drive the Mars rover out. Wow! Huntley Shaw loves that. Okay, George. I have to take that with me. Thanks. I'll see you later. I never knew Huntley liked robots so much. That's how George got the idea to make a robot for Hundley to play with. It worked. Hundley thought George was a real robot. <laughs> Being robotic for a whole hour was tiring. George was ready to get out of that thing. But he didn't want to ruin it for Hundley by letting him see the robot wasn't real. Since he couldn't reach the button, George decided to relax and wait till the elevator came. Oh, hi, Professor. Hi, I just came to pick up a small red robot. You mean the one in the lobby? <laughs> he said two inches tall, but I guess he meant uh, two feet. There was the elevator. Finally, George could go home. Uh-oh, I left it right here. Oh, no. Someone must have kicked it. Check the floor. I don't think you could kick that thing across the room. Oh, sure you could. It's only two inches tall. You mean two feet. I know the difference between inches and feet, Professor. There's a runaway robot upstairs. It's small, red, and says XF-17 on the side. You got the controls? What controls? It has no moving parts. George, Professor Wiseman brought you to the museum because she thought you were my XF-17. Oh. <laughs> yeah, your outfit's so good you almost ended up on exhibit. Hey, that's a great idea. Huh? We promised an XF-17 model. We never said it wouldn't be monkey-powered. <laughs> and that's how George became a museum exhibit for a day. So, is it he? I believe so, Your Highness. Your Highness? What? You are in the presence of Her Royal Majesty, the Princess of Bratsvia. So now, we bow. Wow! A real princess in our lobby! And now, we oh. leave. Uh, hey! Wait a minute! <laughs> you can't walk away with Hundley! Oh, we got carried away. This may be a descendant of the royal dachshund of Bratsvia. Huh? A royal doggy. I always knew he was special. He? <laughs> we must adjourn to the royal quarters and complete the test. Only if I come with you. 
You're both more than welcome. Especially the fuzzy <laughs> monkey. <laughs> oh. <laughs> He wears much more than a helmet. He is not royal. <laughs> uh, shouldn't we weigh him without the monkey? <laughs> <gasps> They're the same! He is royalty, beyond question. <laughs> You're one special dog, Hunley. Not Henley. His name is Lord Percival Barkington the 15th. Percival Barkington? <laughs> hmm. <laughs> and now Lord Percival can take his rightful place in his new home. Ooh, new home? <laughs> you want us to live here? Not you. Just Lord Percival. <laughs> Hunley? <laughs> Without me? Was he really four stripes long? <laughs> that guy must have had some strong neck muscles to wear this. Weighed the same too. Hundley matched all the measurements. George never noticed that mark on Hundley before today. It smelled like jelly. Percival, are you all right? There was no time to look for soap. Is something wrong? A fuzzy monkey! Oh, do I get him too? Uh, no, Your Highness. Now he will go. <laughs> Wait, look! Lord Percival's royal birthmark has vanished! Impossible! That would mean. He's, He's not, not Lord, Lord Percival, Percival after, after all. all. <laughs> <laughs> so, we made a mistake. Huntley must return to his old life. You hear that, boy? Don't be too sad, Huntley. <laughs> <laughs> Well, don't be too happy, either. Please accept our gift of the Royal Bratsfian Leek and Gravy Hoagie. Uh, uh, A dog's lobby was his castle. And for Hundley, even better than a real castle. Thanks for helping me with the Nature Week exhibit, George. <laughs> We'd like to see the tracks of all the animals that live around here. The swim mask? Uh -huh. Oh, I'm gonna go jump in the lake to conduct the Nature Week fish survey. Bye. Ah. George wished his photos were more exciting, but there weren't many exciting animals around here. Hey, George. Ah. What you doing? Wow, I see you've got almost every local animal except that fawn I've seen in the hills. Ah. A fawn is a baby deer. Bet you don't see too many of them in the city, huh? Aww. A fawn was just the special, unusual animal George was looking for. Come on, I'll show you where to find it. 
George still hadn't seen the fawn or learned what its tracks looked like. <gasps> These were the biggest tracks George had seen so far. Something extra large must have left them. They looked like big duck tracks. <laughs> a big duck would make a terrific photo. Ooh, yeah. <laughs> this was like the long track the garter snake made. A giant duck with a snake's tail would make an even better picture. <laughs> but a huge snake with duck feet would be the most incredible photo of all. <laughs> Maybe it swam back home. George remembered he'd seen big tracks like these. <laughs> in a book. There they were, dinosaur tracks. A duck-billed dinosaur. <gasps> and the tracks were headed towards Bill's house. Hiya, George. Did you see the fawn? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I guess those do look like dinosaur tracks. <laughs> yep, my new boots were hurting my feet, so I put these on to walk to the lake. I told you I was going swimming, remember? Uh huh. Hey. Now I know what it's like to walk in a dinosaur's footsteps. <laughs> With no hungry dinosaurs around, George still needed that special photo for Nature Week. It sounded like Jumpy was hungry again. But George had enough pictures of that squirrel. Such big animals, those deer left pretty small tracks. Hey, deer tracks. Wow, you used fruits and vegetables to lure the deer to our house so you could take photos? <laughs> Look at these wonderful deer. <laughs> How did you manage to capture such amazing photos, George? Oh, you know George, he just used his imagination. Isn't that right? <laughs> Whoa. Ah. Welcome to the incredible edible arboretum, a cornucopia of exotic comestibles. Blueberries are my favorite bush-based fruit. Come on, George. It, it looks like you all forgot the county sprout rules. Uh, rule number one. Never eat any plant that you're not 100% certain is safe. And that means... Consulting the edible plants guidebook? Um... No, it means getting an okay from an adult. Right. Rule number two, plants are living things. You can kill or hurt them if you're too rough. So don't pull on them and don't break any branches. <laughs> Come on. 
Why is the screen flickering? Either the Earth is off its axis, or I forgot to charge the batteries. Okay. George, can you climb that tree and see where we are? <laughs> and Bill... Bill? Bill, where are you going? Don't worry. I've got my handy backup compass. This way, folks. Bill? A, a sprout never leaves the trail. That, 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 that's rule number three. Bill? Oh, our excitement's really growing because we don't know where we're going. In this direction, green. In this direction, a path. <gasps> George couldn't believe what he was seeing. Someone was trying to break that branch. Somebody was not being a sprout. Oh no, this man was wrecking a tree. Whoa. Hey, are you a monkey? Cool. I always wanted a monkey, but my mother said no. George had to do something, and fast. This tree was in trouble. Hey, return the headgear, monkey. George didn't mean for the hat to get wet. Or the man. But George couldn't wait around. He had to check on that tree. George wished he could think of a way to get the branches back on the tree. He needed something sticky. Really sticky. Like... Mud. George! Oh, thank goodness I found you! I'm sorry I left you in that tree. <laughs> oh, Dr. Greenbean, nice to see you. <laughs> sorry we're late. We've had a rough day. Tell me about it. First this monkey ran off with my hat, and now my tree lopper has vanished. Ooh, ooh. <laughs> What's going on? Who put mud on this? Uh, George? <laughs> ah, so Dr. Greenbean was cutting some branches and you thought he was hurting the tree. Ah, uh -huh. oh, you should have asked. Oh, wait, <laughs> you're a monkey. Well, anyway, this is called pruning. You make a careful cut, and it doesn't hurt the tree at all. Hey, I got it! Uh, Mr. Sproutmaster? According to this, you're going the exact wrong... Wait, you're going the right way. Never mind, proceed. Go! <laughs> no. No. Uh, good morning, George. I'm going to sleep five more minutes, okay? No! <laughs> yes, sorry! This here roller coaster whips and snaps your round hairpin turns at 70 miles per hour! So come on down to Zany Island and ride the Turbo Python 3000. That's Captain's ah. orders. Arr. Everyone was excited about riding the Turbo Python 3000. Except the man with the yellow hat. He was afraid of roller coasters and remembered the first and last time he rode a roller coaster. It was so long ago, he was just the boy with the yellow hat. <laughs> and 
since that day, roller coasters upset him. Okay, I'm a grown man. I have no reason to fear a roller coaster. No! Uh, enjoy the ride, George. Whew. I am thirsty. Well, excuse me. Uh, I'm sorry, but you can't ride the Turbo Python 3000. Huh? Well, you have to be as tall as this sign to ride. And, uh, you're not. <laughs> That's it, honey. Go to sleep. Nothing makes you grow like a good sleep. Huh? And I want you to grow up to be big and healthy. All this growing made George tired. If sleep made you grow, he could do two things at once. <laughs> sleep made George grow a lot, at least in his dream. I'm sorry. You can't ride the Turbo Python 3000. You're too big. <laughs> George didn't grow as big as he had in his dream, but he grew enough to be five licorice whips tall. <laughs> Seeing Betsy lose her hat reminded the man with the yellow hat of that fateful day. My hat! I lost my hat! No! <laughs> That's it. I I'm not afraid of roller coasters. I'm afraid of losing my yellow hat. Your hat is safe, Betsy! <laughs> What's with all these sour faces? I don't like sour faces at me park, you know. Oh, hi there, Captain Zany. You see, this monkey's too short to ride the Turbo Python 3000. Too short? Bah! He's not too short. Monkeys don't grow very big. That's why we have the... You must be this tall if you're a monkey side. <sighs> you can ride, George, and I'm coming with you. But first, give me all your licorice. Huh? Whoa! George was conducting an important experiment, testing the bounce factor of the living room furniture. <laughs> this part of the couch made a different sound. That wasn't the couch. It sounded big. It sounded heavy. And it came from up there. You must have heard our new neighbor walking around. He moved in last week. What George had heard seemed heavier than footsteps. What are you doing? George, you must have heard our neighbor walking. That, that's all it could be. It's not like he's got some wild animal up there. The man with the yellow hat lived with George, so why couldn't the new neighbor live with an animal? But what kind? Ha 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 ha!
Of course, the new neighbor had brought home an elephant. <laughs> the man with the yellow hat had to hear this. George? <laughs> you, you dreamt about an elephant? books before you go to sleep, George. They're obviously giving you strange dreams. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Yes? Hi there. We're your downstairs neighbors, and... Oh, so nice to meet you. Uh -huh. <sighs> George! <laughs> What's he doing? I think he's looking for your, uh, elephant. My what? <laughs> oh, we heard some loud sounds. Um, very loud sounds. Very loud Oh, I, I am so sorry. Sometimes I get carried away working on my art. Art? I am an artist. I do murals. I mix my paint here. Then I use these rubber stamps I made. Here's one of my completed works. We also heard something like a bag of rocks dropping. Do you use rocks in your work? No. Uh, oh, that was a bag of groceries. It fell off the counter. Huh? Uh -huh. <laughs> hmm. What on earth is that? Sounds like an elephant finger painting. Huh? It does. 